Hi y'all, good morning, welcome, happy Monday. July 3rd, we're just right in the eve of celebrating our country's independence, July 4th, and we are just going strong today. It is a good day, got my coffee. I hope you had your coffee this morning and your Bible and your journal. And as we wait for people to get on, I'm just going to pray us up. Hey, John Atten, good morning, good to see you. Allison, good morning, I'm glad you could join me today. So, are y'all ready for another week? At least, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a weird week because it's like, I don't know if anybody is having to work today. I know some people are working today, then they're off tomorrow, then they have to work. It kind of messes us up when the holiday's in the middle of the week. But we'll take what we can get, right? So let's pray us up. Today we're going to be talking about freedom and what that freedom looks like, what that means for us. Well, this whole week we're going to be talking about freedom. So, hey, Kim, good morning. Good to see you. Y'all hold my hand. Let me pray you up. And let's get us ready to receive what God has for us today. So here we go. Let's pray. Father, we love you and praise you and worship you. Thank you for the ability to all gather together in my kitchen, around my table here. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what Jesus has done. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, just work in us today. I pray you'll speak to me today that each of us will receive a little bit more freedom, find a little more grace in that freedom that you have you have died to give, in, to give us for all eternity. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. I have to tell you, I did. I'm going to be talking about this book um, today. But look, it's a big book. Um, it's a huge book. When I read big books like this, I'm so proud of myself when I make it all the way through it. Susie Fowler, good morning, and Deb Warren. So this is by Francine Rivers. How many of you guys read Francine Rivers? Anybody? So she is, um, it's fiction, and it's called A Voice in the Wind, and it's set in the first century um, after... Christ, the first century of the first church, the, the Christians, and everything that they had to go through um, as new believers. And it's a great book, but I'm going to blame it this morning on the fact that I'm tired because I started reading some more of it yesterday afternoon, and then I got hooked, and then I read a little bit more last night before I went to bed, and before I knew it, it was really late, and okay, so if I'm out of it today... I'm blaming it on his book. I'm going to tell you some more about that in a little bit. So, hey, Venus. Good to see you this morning. Fight a bread this morning is 2 Corinthians 3.17. And if you aren't familiar with my website, you can go to wordsbyindylee.com and get the whole list for the week of the reading plan. Also, there's a printable that you can print off that has the scriptures and questions and prompts to help you with your week. And Alvina said she just does a screenshot of that. And so it's on her phone. She doesn't even print it off. So that's another way to use this. But let's dig into 2 Corinthians 3, 17. I want to read that to us this morning, and then we're going to look at the context and all around it. So 2 Corinthians 3.17 simply says, powerfully says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, everybody say it, you ready? There is freedom. So let me read it again. Now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Great. Awesome verse, right? Just, you may just want to drink it in. We're going to unpack this verse. First, I want us to look at the context. Yes, Venus says liberty. Some of the translations use the word liberty instead of freedom, and that is correct. That is another meaning for that word, and we're going to be talking about that in a minute. What, what does that mean? How does that affect us as believers? So the context of 2 Corinthians is important. Paul is writing the second letter to Corinthians, defending his apostleship, defending who he is and what he's taught. 
And that's, it's really important to understand why he's writing, what he's writing. Um, so he's defending his apostleship. He's been there. He's been to Corinth. He's met with them. He's, they, he helped many of them come to faith there. He's written in one letter that was very didactic that taught them a lot. And this second letter is not so much. It's more of just talking to him, defending what he does, telling him how proud he is of him, how much he loves him. So this is really cool. So um, this week as we talk about freedom, you know, we are so far removed. Um, first of all, we're so far removed from our own country's freedom, right? Like it was, I think I heard 241 years that our country is celebrating our independence and our freedom this year. 241 years. I was 10 when we celebrated our 200 year birthday. Do y'all remember that? Do you remember the bicentennial? I mean, did your little cities do, you know, really fun things and have parades and, and contests? And, oh, it was just, there were like 1,500 people in my little bitty farm town that I grew up in, and that was a really big occasion. Like, we had real fireworks. We didn't even just have the ones in our backyard, but our community had fireworks. So that was a big deal. They, they pulled out all the stops, and, and it was so much fun. But I would say that as Americans, we are so far removed from what it took to be free that we have forgotten, and that's why we're kind of in the mess we're in now. Um, but also as Christians, yes, we never lived on the other side of the cross. We don't know what it was like before Jesus, before Jesus died and Holy Spirit came. We've never lived that way. So Kim says she was in Boston. You were in Boston for the 200, the bicentennial? That's awesome. I bet that was a huge big deal. A lot bigger than Little Grandfield, Oklahoma. But how cool was that? So anyway, we are so far removed from the cross. And it's really good for us to remember to try to go back as much as we can. To read these scriptures. To remember what the context is. What Paul is talking about. What they are suffering for. What they are doing. And what they are facing. And in this time, during this time. So reading this book by Francine Rivers um, has really opened my eyes to how dangerous it was for Christians. Not only did the Jews not like them, the Romans hated them, um, the Greeks hated them, Nero put them, he, he would take women and put them on a pole, put them, um, put tar all over them and light them on fire. That's how bad it was for Christians back in the day. None of us have to suffer like that at all. There is persecution going on in the world today for Christians, um, but most of us have not experienced that and don't know what that's like. But in 2 Corinthians um Verse 4, I want to look at the context um, of this, the verses that are around this scripture. So in verse 4, um, chapter 10, he says, We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. And, you know, we read the scripture and we try to put it on us. <laughs> you know, like, oh, what does he mean by that? But really, we had to read the context there. Paul is saying we are dying for our faith. <laughs> the apostles all of them, all of them suffered and were persecuted and died for their faith. And he said, but even though we are dying for our faith, we are, we are death here. You are the life. You are taking that life. It's living in you. You have this freedom. Live it. So now I want to go back. I know it's like I'm going all over here. But 2 Corinthians 3, at the beginning, the context surrounding this scripture he says um, in verse 2, you yourselves are our letter. 
written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Don't you love that? So he's saying, we have come, we have brought you this truth, we've told you about the Spirit and the freedom in the Spirit. He said, you are a walking testimony. You are, you are our testimony of what we're sharing, our ministry. I love this. You've written not with the ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Who, who um, do you need to go back and thank? Who can you thank for sharing Christ with you, sharing the Spirit with you. Who was the one who gave this truth to you and helped you come to know the truth and believe? Did you know that you are a walking testimony, a letter of what they poured into you? Hey, Mary Anna, good morning. Thank you for joining. We're in 2 Corinthians 3 and 4 this morning. He's so, I, I just don't, I don't want us to miss that. Because he says that often. He says, I've poured into you. I've ministered to you. Um, you are that letter of what we've been doing. He says, such confidence as this is ours through Christ before God, that not, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God he has made us competent as ministers, a new covenant, not at the letter, but the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. What is he talking about? He's talking about the Old Testament law. He's talking about the letter of the law, the letter of the law. So in 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 17, he's talking about the glory of the new covenant. And he says, now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory. He's talking about the Ten Commandments, that they came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. Do you remember? So Moses would spend time with God and then he would he would come back to the people and his face would be all shiny because he had been in the presence of God and so he had to put a veil over his face because he was freaking on the people out so he said if the ministry that condemns men is glorious how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness for what was glorious has no glory now in comparison to the surpassing glory and if that was a fainting away came with glory how much greater it's the glory. He says glory a lot. Somebody just say glory. Glory. He says glory all the time. He says, um, and if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? So, therefore, since we have such a hope, this is really what I'm trying to get to. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Are you bold? He says, I am bold, my people. I can't be quiet about this. You know, when you find something good, when you find freedom, when you find the spirit that gives you the freedom in life to, to share and to be free and not to be just... Um, wounded and in bondage to our sin and to ourself and to that yuck he says you know you can't be quiet and so he says therefore since we have such a hope we are very bold we are not like moses who would put a veil over his face to keep the israelites gazing um at his radiance as, as it was fending away but their minds were made dull for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read it is not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Okay, when you turn to the Lord, let's talk about that word turn for a minute. In the Greek, the word means to turn or to return, to return to the Lord. Um, it comes, it's a, that's the Greek word, but the Hebrew word that's used for returning is shub. The shub means to, to return back, to turn back or to return. This word also means to embrace. 
And so I think that's interesting. Wherever anyone embraces the Lord, turns, returns to the Lord. And the word Lord here, it's not all in capitals, but you only really find that in the Old Testament for Yahweh. But the word Lord here is kyrios. It means Lord. It means Master. If you read it in the complete Jewish Bible, they do translate it as the name Adonai. And Adonai is the word that's used often in replace of Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, that sacred name of the most holy God. And so he says, when, um, when you turn to Adonai, Everybody just say, Adonai, Adonai. He's your Lord. He's your master. He is the God of all creation in time, in people. Adonai, when we turn to Adonai. And then it says the veil is taken away. When you turn to him, you're going to be able to see. It's going to be able to understand and to get. But first, we got to turn toward him. So many of us and so many people are just focused on what themselves and and making it greater and bigger and their big dreams and, and what they want to do. Ah, give that up. Turn toward the Lord to Jesus. Um it says then it says verse 17, now the Lord Kyrios Adonai is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Freedom. And this brings us to our bite for today. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The word freedom, which also is translated sometimes as a liberty. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce. E-L-E-U-T-H-E-R-I-A is the Greek word. It means liberty. It means privilege. It means authority, um, independence, generosity. Freedom from the law concerns um, liberty from its, um, so this is a quote from the, the keyword. Freedom from the law um, concerns liberty from its forms and ceremonies and fulfilled, it was fulfilled by Christ. So it, it, um, this kind of freedom says you don't have to do all that stuff that the law said you have to do the religious stuff, right? Gives us free just to be children in Christ, to be who we are in Christ for the Holy Spirit in us. We are transformed into his likeness, verse 18. And we who with unveiled faces, we're not trying to hide it. We're not, we're not trying to hide the shining. We're not trying to hide who we are as Christians. And we who with the unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness. Amen, amen, amen. Into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is spirit. Hey, Bruce, good morning. It was good to see you the other night. I'm glad you're joining me today. So 2 Corinthians 3, 18 is what I just read. 17 and 18, 17 is our bite. Now the Lord who is spirit, and for the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we who with the unveiled faces all reflect the, the Lord's glory are being transformed. Some may say, hallelujah, we're being transformed. We're being changed. But you know what? We don't do it. We, we aren't doing it. The Holy Spirit changes us, transforms us, makes us shiny. So the prayer for me is, Lord, less of me, more of you. Fill me up. How do we get that? How do we get that? Let's talk for a minute about religion. <laughs> so what religious laws are you still trying to do? What are you trying to do? Are you still trying to check those boxes off so you can be good enough? Hey, Tim, good morning. Are you still trying to check those boxes off? Guess what? Check, checking the boxes off won't, won't get us to heaven. It's already been done. Jesus has done it. Jesus has done it. His Holy Spirit has come. It fills us up. He fills us up and he transforms us and changes us. To And, and it says in verse 18, we're being transformed into his 
lightness. Do y'all want to look like Jesus? Hello, I do. I want to look like him. I want to act like him. I want to love like him. I want to give like him. Jesus was the one person that walked on this earth that was totally free from this world and free from from all the trappings and the of religion and pride and, and selfishness. Jesus didn't have any of that in him. I want to be more like that every day. And you know what? It's possible because of the Spirit, because of that freedom that he has given us. So, you know, we have this today. We have this freedom. What are we still needing to be free from? What do you want to be free from? I wanted to read to you, if you go to wordsbyindyleen.com, I talk about Isaiah 61. 1. I love Isaiah. I love Isaiah 61. But Isaiah 61, 1, if you want to turn there with me, says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord, Yahweh, has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the cap freedom for the captives, and release darkness, release from darkness for the prisoners. Look what he did. This is what Jesus did himself. Jesus, he stood up in the temple and he read Isaiah 61. And when he spoke these words, he read these words. They were coming to pass. They were happening. The Savior was really there. Can you imagine being in the presence of that? Y'all, the word poor is really interesting. He said, I've come I've come to preach the good news to the poor. That word poor also means depressed. Anybody depressed? Anybody struggling a little bit with depression? Guess what? Jesus has come for you. Hey, Robin, good morning. I think 95% of us struggle with some kind of depression somewhere, some level uh, in this life. So he said, I've come for the depressed. He has sent me, he said, to bind up the brokenhearted. Oh my gosh, the word bind is a picture of, of taking a cloth and, and putting it around a wound binding that wound so it would no longer bleed, binding it really, really tight. And the brokenhearted, the word brokenhearted means smashed and crushed, torn into pieces. That's what that word is. So Jesus came for the depressed, the wounded, and the shattered. He came for us. Hello, anybody, anybody? Uh, can, we, uh, can we say, yes, I need Jesus. So he came to heal us, but he also came to set us free from our captivity and to bring us out of those dark places into light. But some of us are still stuck in that. We received Jesus. We know about him, but we're still fighting to be free. I just want to encourage you today to say, Jesus, help me know how much you love me. Help me know how much you've done for me. And we're so separated from the cross. Lord, please don't let me take it for granted. Please don't let me live this life as your death was in vain. But please free me. Thank you that you've done this, Holy Spirit. Fill me up in Jesus' name. Fill me up and let me shine. Let me just be shiny and bright and radiant to all those around me. It's not going to be anything we do. It's not going to be that we're good enough, that we go to church, that we listen to praise music. Uh -uh. We do all that because we're free to do that. Amen. We're free to do that. We're free to worship together. We're free to to listen to that music on the radio. We are free, the good music that, that fills our spirit. We're free to read the word. Oh my gosh, we take it for granted. There are places where they can't have this. North Korea is one of them. They can't have their Bible there. So, oh, that we would not take any of this freedom for granted. We don't, we don't have to, but it's because now we want to. We've gone from death to life, and we're going to proclaim it from the rooftops that Christ has died for us to set us free. Amen and amen. So I wanted to share with you, um, I am holding a Mary Like Me Facebook group starting next Monday, um, July 10th. 
If you want to go, if you want to be a part of that, go to wordsbyindylee.com. Um, on the top of the screen, you'll see Facebook Marin Group. Join that. Um, I'll add you to the group. I wanted to read a little bit from it for you. The very last of the book, I talk about dreams for a season. And I write, I wouldn't be honest if I told you that life was bliss once I began to trust God to do good and really live wherever he moved and, and delighted in him um, through worship. Bad days sneaked in once in a while. Friends moved, or we did, leaving gaps in my heart until new friends were found. Mike's job required almost all of him except on the weekends, though sometimes even the weekends were spent without him, even whole seasons when deployment called. But God was faithful. Through the years, he unearthed dreams, big and small, and I learned that dreams don't have to be big to be important and life-giving. We all desire God-sized dreams. We were made for that, but I learned I would miss eternal opportunities, the ones that store up treasures in heaven, if I only had my eye on the big dream rather than the small ones unfolding right in front of my face. God has many dreams and purposes for us, not just one giant dream. And most of our dreams are only for a season. But he has set us free to live with him, to do this life, to be life-giving, to live this life in freedom and liberty, to love and to give and to share and to shine. Let's do it. Hey, hold my hand. Let me pray you up. Father, we praise you. Oh, thank you for this word, Lord. Let us never, ever forget what you've done for our freedom. And Lord, help us as Americans not to forget what's been done. We can live in this country of freedom and liberty where we can read our Bibles. I can talk on Facebook Live about you. Lord, thank you for the freedom and the liberty we have. Help us take that into our spiritual life. Holy Spirit, fill us up more of you. The more of you we have, the freer we are. Um, break those shackles, Lord, of, of the, the sin and the wounds and the pain that we just hold on to because we don't know any better. Break those in Jesus' name. Bind up those wounds. We thank you, Lord. Put those hearts back together your way. In Jesus' name, those shattered, those shattered hearts, those broken hearted. Lord, thank you that you have come to set us free. Lord, I just pray that the truth will become stronger in us, that we will become shinier, that we will share this with others, that we'll go back and thank the person that told us about Jesus, that brought us to this truth, that we would be those letters, not written in ink, but written in this life um, and how we live. We love you. We praise you. It is for freedom, Lord, that you set us free, and we thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Hey, Susan, good to see you. Thank you for joining. I pray that encouraged you today. You know, I heard something yesterday at church. It was good stuff. That praise is, you know, to praise and worship are different things. That praise is by, you know, giving him our worship with our words and our song. And that's how we praise him. But worshiping him is more than just singing. That to worship him is the the way we live. We the way we live shows our worship. Who are you worshiping today? I hope you worship Jesus because that's where you'll find freedom. Y'all have a great day. Mwah! See you tomorrow. We're gonna be on John eight thirty six. I'll be right here at eight. 20. Have a wonderful day. If you're already starting your hol holiday, enjoy our dependence, independence, our dependence on God, our independence and our freedom. Have a great day. Bye.